guys, I'm here today to talk about all the books I read during the Booktubeathon, aka my Booktubeathon wrap up. So, the Booktubeathon, if you're not familiar, is a readathon that takes place online and has very recently wrapped up. It wrapped up on the 5th of August, and I took part this year and did a TBR video beforehand. I read two of the books from that TBR video and two books not from that TBR video so I said in that video that my aim was to read four books and I did so I'm very happy about that but I did go off the TBR slightly um, for various different reasons that I will talk about as we get into the books but I'm sure you're just interested in hearing what I read. I don't usually read four books in a, in a week so that is definitely an accomplishment for me. I would say maybe two is my maximum a week. So I was very pleased with how the readathon went and I would love to hear how your readathon went if you were taking part. But the first book I read and finished was Misogynation, The True Scale of Sexism by Laura Bates. I really enjoyed this book. Five out of five stars, would recommend it to everybody. It was great. Very much how I felt about Laura Bates' other book, Everyday Sexism, which is on a similar topic, sexism. Um, although, it differs in some places. So the structure of this book is very different. It is a collection of Laura Bates's columns and articles, which means that you might have read some of them beforehand. They are not new, however, they are obviously compiling them in one place for an overview and which also means you can kind of think about what they're all saying in one place and they show kind of overlapping themes and things that crop up again and again. And I think that really works. And I really enjoyed reading these columns in that format. There is also overlap with this book and Everyday Sexism. The book does on occasion draw from the Everyday Sexism project which Laura Brates runs and highlights occurrences of everyday sexism all the way from street harassment to sexual abuse. So there will be repetition there if you've read the other book. However, I think in itself as a standalone book it's just fantastic and such a good introduction but also um, next step or reminder in this topic. Um, it's, it's kind of for everybody and this stuff bears repeating and it does also highlight n new themes or focus in on other themes that aren't as heavily focused on everyday sexism and one of the main themes in this is very much the media's treatment of women and kind of these sexist headlines that are constantly appearing, the way in which the media perpetuates sexism, whether it be in the workplace, in, in, in regards to both men and women, whether it be sexually and how that then goes on to affect people's everyday lives and how dangerous it is and also just how ridiculous it is. And Laura Bates quite often uses a sarcastic voice in these, these articles and I really enjoy that because it reminds me of kind of the way that you yourself deal with sexism a little bit. It's just sort of like you can't believe some of the things that still happen and are still said and it makes you roll your eyes and want to respond sarcastically. It's also a bit of a defence mechanism but it's also because because laughing at something makes it a little bit less scary and a little bit more like you can deal with it and also I think creates an atmosphere of camaraderie with people who are experiencing the same thing and I enjoy that about Laura Bates's books. Um, this is an emotional read because it's hard hitting and it reminds you of all the things that you experience and often just put up with as a woman but um, it really is anybody in society explore, ex explores some of the different intersections of sexism with other types of discrimination and it's just a brilliant book, I would recommend you read it. That was on my TBR if you remember, but the next book was not on my TBR and that is Nevermore, The Trails of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is the first in a children's book series, the sequel to which comes out this year and I'm so pleased about that because I really enjoyed this book as well and really want the sequel, I want to know what's going to happen next. I don't think I have enjoyed a children's book as much as I enjoyed this children's book as an adult that I haven't read previously. So, sorry, what I mean by that is I've reread favourite children's books as an adult and adored them, but all of the new children's books I've read as an adult I have enjoyed, but still felt a little bit like these are children's books and I am not the primary demographic and they don't have that much to offer me in comparison to adult books. Whereas this was just brilliant. I think this is one for everybody of every age. It's a real high calibre children's book that kind of defies being restricted by its genre and will be enjoyed by everybody. But it also has a lot of the fun and innocence and well, sometimes I say innocence, but sometimes children's books can be a little bit more gruesome or deal with darker things um, just in a, in a way that's different from adult books. 
I mean, it has all the fun of a children's book and it was really, really immersive. It's about Morrigan Crow, who's a young girl that is supposed to die on her 11th birthday. However, on her 11th birthday, she is instead spirited away by Jupiter, who has agreed to be her patron and submit her as a candidate to the Wonder Society. To the Wondrous Society, which is a society of wondrous people. But then to get into the Wondrous Society and remain safe, she has to complete certain tasks as well as demonstrate a special skill, which she doesn't think she has. She's not familiar with any special skill and doesn't understand why she's been put forward for this this society. So it's so much fun, it's so magical, it's set in a completely different world, the world of the author's own imagining and she just does a fantastic job. There's mysteries and um, the pacing just means that you find things out at a really good rate um, and there's some really great revelations at the end of the book but also some real setup for following books that you want to know what's going to happen next and it's just great great fun. Slightly differently though I then read Antigone by Sophocles. This was on my booktubeathon TBR, see I did read some of those books. And this is one of the plays that comes under the heading, most often, the three Theban plays by Sophocles. And this is a bind up of all three. The other two are Oedipus the King and Oedipus at Clonus, and I've previously read Oedipus the King. Antigone is actually set post Oedipus the King, um, so I kind of read them in the right order. Antigone <laughs> is set after the events of Oedipus the King, after Oedipus has actually passed away. Antigone is one of Oedipus's daughters. And it's an ancient Greek play from the 5th century BC that I hadn't read before. I know it's really famous, how hadn't I read it, but I have now, so you can't hold it against me. <laughs> and I enjoyed this one. It is, yeah, like I mentioned, one of the more popular Greek tragedies, and although it's not, not now my favourite Greek tragedy, it is definitely a standout in its genre. It follows Antigone and Oedipus's family. Oedipus and Jocasta, Antigone's parents, have passed away for reasons that I won't give away, I guess, if you can spoil a myth. Um, however, her brothers have also just died, and her uncle is forbidding a proper burial to one of these brothers for reasons, again, I won't give away. Um, and Antigone goes against his wishes and um, sets herself against her uncle because she wants to give her brother the proper burial in respect to custom and tradition um, and what she sees as her, her role as his sister and a surviving member of his family. And that's what it's about. I will actually be doing a live show for this book if you're one of my patrons. So I have a book club on Patreon which I read and we pick books, read them together and then I do a live show about the book and this is the one that I'll be doing a live show for at the end of August slash the beginning of September. So there'll be lots of detail to talk about there but I'm pleased that I read this for sure. I'm really pleased that I read this. And lastly, I listened to the audiobook of Salvage the Bones by Jesmyn Ward. This was an outlier. I picked this one up because of a recommendation from Kendra, who has a booktube channel that I will link down below. And it was a really good book. It's my first Jesmyn Ward book. She's written a few and quite a few have become quite famous, but I hadn't read any of them beforehand. And this one follows our protagonist, who's a young girl in a family of otherwise all men. It's her, her father and her three brothers. And they live in Mississippi and the book is set in the build up to Hurricane Katrina. It's only set over a few days, just under a fortnight. And it's just what takes place in that short space of time, including her realizing that she's pregnant, which is quite near the beginning of the book as part of the setup and she's only 14 or 15 so she's dealing with this not sure if she should tell anybody I'm not sure if she should tell the father I'm not sure how, how he'll react um, and also like reminiscing on the past and her relationship with her family and her mother and simultaneously her brother's fighting dog has just given birth to a litter of puppies um, so she's sort of relating to the dog as a mother and on the topic of motherhood and relationships and family and she does a lot of her mulling through Greek myth. So she is really interested in Greek mythology and really likes reading Greek mythology and in particular loves the story of Jason and Medea. And she quite often relates her own experience and circumstances and feelings to those of Medea. And it's so beautifully woven together. It's not a Greek myth retelling, but the way that the author weaves in this character's interest in those myths and how she relates them to her own life is so beautifully done. I just thought it was stunning. I thought it was so impressive. It really kind of 
highlights the timeless themes in some of these stories, how we make stories our own, how we use stories to explore our own feelings and our experiences and yeah it was a, just a really interesting really well written book and it was narrated really well as well as an, as an audiobook I would recommend the audiobook but I'll definitely be checking out some more of Jasmine Ward in the future so let me know what you would recommend by her. But those are all the books I read during the Booktubeathon, not a dud in sight, all four or five star reads which was nice of course um, and yeah I'm pleased that I managed to read four books. So let me know what you managed to read if you were taking part in the Booktubeathon, did you read anything particularly good, read any duds and what do you think of any of the books I've mentioned in this video, have you read them or would you like to read them, I'd love to hear from you. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon, bye!